enemy. Worries have power, but actions speak loud and pretend to be free. Till you die a slave, a soldier in the desert, searching for a ghost in the cave for the corporation. I run out of patience, sick of seeing troops sink to die for your lives. Spend the dollar down the like protest. Till we have your arrest, we will not rest. And we know. Uh -oh. Is that the New World Order spying on me and Mark there? Welcome back, guys. It's Friday, July 1st, 2011. Three days before July 4th, this country's quote-unquote birthday. Although I really don't think we have anything to be celebrating about, but that's just another show in itself. Mark, getting back into what you were uh, talking about before we went to break, with... With this knowledge that they have over top of, you know, we'll say the general population, I mean, it, they put it right in people's faces. Is that – from my research, I come to find that that's kind of like a screw you type thing. What's your opinion on that, why they throw it in your face as much as they do? It's almost like a way that they get uh, perverted pleasure. They get their kicks that way by putting it out there and giving – you know, it's the idea – We'll give people a chance to see what's going on, you know, but we know that they're so unconscious that they they won't take that chance. They won't take that opportunity, you know, so we, we can mock them even further by putting the knowledge in plain sight right out in the open. And yet people still won't take advantage of that opportunity. So it's it's really a way that they just get some some form of de demented perverted pleasure from hiding something in plain sight and getting off on the fact that people still can't observe it when it's even right in front of their face they they uh you know to to go back to the the their kind of grouping their um their segmenting of people into into groups um the this one group Group that I was talking about, that, you know, they consider the mass bulk of humanity, and they call people the dead. That's their general name for people. Um, and then they have the subgroup of the people who they condition into this belief in human authority and the laws that are created by flawed human beings that they scribble down in books and call it the law. Okay, um, they they. Um, this subgrouping that they give a certain amount of uh, the so-called right to use violence against other people too, okay, which really can't be granted by any man, woman, or group of people to any other because it doesn't exist. The right to use violence uh, against other people to coerce them to do something as long as they're not doing anything to harm other people does not exist in nature and therefore it can't be granted to anyone. This is how natural law works. We can get into that later, but they, they this subgrouping of people who they have convinced is that they are have the right to control other people's actions and behaviors. Again, as I said, even if they're not actually harming anyone else, um, who we consider the controller class, you know, the military, the police, the judges, the, you know, all the people in the bureaucracy of government, etc. They have a name for that subclass of people, this control, so-called controller class. See, the occultists are the real hidden controllers behind the scenes because they're the people who are actually putting this mind manipulation into place. And so, therefore, they're the ones who are really pulling the strings of all these puppets who are basically owned by these occultists. They don't own their own actions because they don't own their own mind. If your mind is manipulated, you don't own your own behavior. So, uh, they don't call refer to them as puppets. The two names that I have ever heard them refer to the police, military, and other control system agents as is our dogs. Y yes, you heard me correctly. Our dogs. And I've also heard them referred to as our pets. That's it. They're the only names I've ever heard them referred to as. And, and they do not simply, they, that is how they refer to them as, in person behind closed doors. Not to their face, of course, because if somebody referred to you as their dog or their pet, I'm sure you wouldn't take too kindly to it. And these aren't physically, impact, you know, uh, uh, these people don't have a lot of physical prowess that makes them any, you know, stronger or, you know, superior to other people in any physical sense. They just have 
a very advanced intellect and the understanding of how the human psyche works and how to manipulate the human psyche, how to manipulate consciousness. Okay, so um, they refer to them be, in, in their own circles, behind closed doors, as I said, as their dogs. And I mean, imagine how degrading that is. I mean, that's like you know worse. That's why they gave us dog tags in boot camp, Mark. That, that's exactly the reason. That's a hidden symbol. That's a, and it's right there in people's face. And you'd and be they surprised how proud it. you are, how brainwashed you are, and proud you are to have those quote unquote dog tags. Believe me, I was. Oh. You know, I'm a veteran, so I I know. You know, in fact, I still have I still have my dog tags. And now you know, now I understand what they are. I look at them, and I'm like, I can't believe I wore these things the way I did. And you realize that you're you're considered like you know a like you said a pet. It's, it's they very- consider the controller so-called controller class. I want to emphasize so-called because they're not the people in control. No, not at all. Okay, they they they, they have more disdain for them than the group of people that they call the dead. It's it's ten orders of magnitude. Their their disdain, hatred, and disgust for them is ten orders of magnitude beyond what they consider the av- everyday person who has no idea of any of this going on because they look at it as this this group of people is so unconscious that they're willing to do it to their own kind. They're willing to do it. They're in the same cage, in the same prison as the other people. We've put them all into the same cage, into the same prison, and they're willing to do it to their own kind. You know, a, a great movie that really makes this allegory, it's kind of a cheesy B movie, um, uh, Battlefield Earth. Uh, I love science fiction. I love allegorical science fiction like The Matrix, They Live. More more modern films like The Matrix goes into it pretty deeply, this control system. But an older movie was uh, Battlefield Earth, and this is based on a novel by L. Ron Hubbard, which, you know, I don't you know, look into Scientology as anything serious. I think th- there was something of value behind th- his original book, Dianetics, and then it got totally co-opted and, and, and turned into a, a, a perverted religion of, of a sort. But not to get too deeply into that, uh, he, he wrote some good sci- allegorical science fiction. Battlefield Earth was one of them. And this movie was made. People should definitely check it out because it shows the mentality of this class. All of the humans in this movie are kept by this uh, alien race of beings who came to the Earth to mine its resources, take everything it had, leave it as an empty husk, and then move along to another planet to do the same wow, thing. Wow, that sounds like the Sumerian creation story. It, it, well, it is. In With the a, Anunnaki in almost, you know? It is is a very veiled, a thinly veiled allegory for that creation epic, in my opinion. Um, it's very interesting to watch. Again, the acting isn't so great. It's generally considered yeah, it was demon. considered a horrible movie. I've never even seen it myself, but I'm actually going to have to go out and try no, to give, find give it on it Netflix. <laughs> give it a watch. It's a good. It's a good allegory, and I do believe it is on Netflix um, uh, for instant play. But. Um, uh, when you watch this, you see the mentality of the people in the cages that they put them in. And when the, when the hero of the story gets to the first uh, cages that the, the humans are kept in, he finds that they already have this system in place where the, the alpha males of the group, who are representative of this controller class amongst human beings, basically say, here's how it's going to work. We're going to eat first, and if there's anything left over for you, maybe you'll survive. And he basically says, no, it's not going to work that way. And he, he challenges this this uh, control agent within the cages to actually fight him to say, you know, if I beat you, we're, things are going to be done my way and everybody's going to eat so we can maintain our strength to fight the real controllers who are all keeping us in the same cage. You know, and this duality has to be maintained by the dominator, the real dominator class, the people who are controlling 